My fellow American leaguers, our long National League nightmare is over. For the first time since 2012, the NL has won an All-Star game, and it was an eighth-inning homer by Rockies catcher Elias Diaz that put the NL out in front, a lead that would hold despite the hometown hero J-Rod getting to the plate in the ninth, representing what would have been the go-ahead run. Last time the National League hit a go-ahead home run in the eighth inning or later in an All-Star game was 1995 when Jeff Conine played the role of hero. But in this instance, it's Diaz giving the NL a one-run lead, a lead that held, and a win that was more than a decade in the making. For more, we say hello to CBS Sports MLB insider David Sampson and CBS MLB writer Matt Snyder. Matt, I'm going to go to you first here. Uh, take me right into that working document. What's the lead to this edition of the Midsummer Classic? Well, I think it's got to be the National League breaking that losing streak. I mean, it was nine in a row. It had been since 2012. I just thought back to the 2012 game, and Chipper Jones was on the National League team, and that, that's how long it's been. He's in the Hall of Fame now. He's been there for a few <laughs> years. That's how long it's been since the National League won the game. So that's got to be it. Plus, it happened late. Elias Diaz with that home run. I saw a stat that said it was the first go-ahead home run in the eighth inning or later by either team since Hank Blaylock took Eric Gagne deep in 2003. Remember, that was the year that Gagne was 55 for 55 in saves. And as I was processing that information, I realized that Dusty Baker was the manager of Gagne's team, just like he was the manager of the American League tonight. And I, I was, was sitting Dusty's in left fault. field. It definitely was not. Yeah, it was definitely <laughs> was not Dusty's fault. And either one of those, it was just a total coincidence. I just, uh, again, that gives an idea of how long it had been mm -hmm. since something like that happened. Uh, fun night all around. David, this was at moments a slow paced all star game and we'll get to maybe what this means in terms of the pitching advantage in Major League Baseball right now. But your emerging thought coming out of this game is what? My emerging thought is that baseball is back and it's getting younger and all of the items around this game other than the sell the team chance that came <laughs> for the A's. It was all about baseball. It was mm -hmm. all about Otani. It was about these pitchers coming in and blowing 100. It's about miking the players so you have access while you're watching the game. It's about the fans getting the moment with Julio Rodriguez to try to win the game in front of his home crowd. So many positive stories. Clearly, the National League winning is a good one. But the other note is that, yes, it was over a three-hour game. And the time of games have gone down considerably during the regular season. But when the postseason comes, and this was like a postseason game, you're going to see these three-hour games again. And that's going to be okay for the fans. Yeah, it, it did grind to a halt at moments. But exciting moments to decide it late in this game, as Matt said here. David, you alluded to there. We saw a lot of guys pumping triple digits, even more of them close to those numbers. It really feels like right now, I don't know if this is broad strokes, but pitching does have the edge. We're looking at six of our last seven All-Star games going under the total. This one uh, marked right in that column as well. Do you see a disproportionate advantage towards pitching in the game today, or, or are we maybe magnifying that too greatly here out of the All-Star game? Well, we've always said that pitching and defense is how you're going to get rings. And when you get to the postseason, you get more of these three to two games or five to four games generally. And when I spoke to our hitters who would come back from the All-Star game, what they commented to me is that every single pitcher coming in knows they're only going for an inning. It's like facing nine closers. And anytime you're facing nine closers, you're hoping that one of the closers will have an off moment. And we saw that a little bit with Batista, who has been outstanding this year for the Orioles. So you saw with Duvall, gave up a hit, and all of a sudden, it's the end of the world as we know it. So that is the takeaway. The All-Star game is way harder for the hitters than it is for the pitchers. Matt, did this game illuminate anything for you or, or maybe uh, solidify a thought in your head that maybe you'd been working through in the first half? Again, we have the best in the world all in one place. We try and come away with it with something. No, not really. I mean, it's, it's one game, and, and you know, as David said, from the hitter's perspective, it's like facing a closer every single inning. So not really. I more look at it as fun. Uh, you know, there was a lot of fun stuff in there. That Duvall versus Julio Rodriguez matchup, man, that was fun. I mean, that was Duvall just pumping 100 up there, Julio swinging for the fences, the crowd chanting Julio to have a moment like that. Kind of a bummer we didn't get to see Julio make contact in the last at bat when he could have hit a walk-off. He walked instead before the Jose Ramirez strikeout to end the game. But I – 
I, I don't think we should really take anything away like moving forward into the second half uh, in terms of individual players or individual teams or anything like that. It's just a fun event, which could have been a lot more fun if it ended tied. <laughs> I'm just saying, because then we would have had a home run derby. But other than that, it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, we would have gotten to that swing away, uh, swing off. Excuse me. Uh, maybe the takeaway here is that the MVP, Elias Diaz, uh, was non-tendered by the Pirates in 2019, and he plays the role of hero in this moment. Uh, David, again, we don't want to conflate. We don't want to overstate, but can this serve as a jumping off point for a player? I mean, a point of pride, obviously, but a point of confidence moving forward as well. Well, you have this on your resume, on your baseball resume mm -hmm. forever. Jeff Conine will still talk about his All-Star Game MVP. You add a few World Series rings to that, you've got yourself a back of a baseball card. Mm. What I'm thinking watching this game as a former team president, I'm looking at Diaz and his reasonable contract. I'm looking at teams that need catching help, and I'm calling the Rockies to say, hey, any interest before August 1st? Because it's not just that Diaz connected today, he's actually an upgrade for, I'd say, about 15 teams minimum who are in the race and the Rockies not being one of them. So as an executive, the All-Star Game really is the jumping off point for serious trade deadline talks and trades. We've got till August 1st, and what you're focused on now is you want to start the second half off strong, but as a front office, you're focused on the deadline and what your team's going to do, buy, sell, stay, and then who you're going to buy, who you're going to sell, and how you convince your team that it was okay to stay. I can get on board with that. Maybe a little bit of window shopping here at the All-Star Game. Uh, we are always looking to improve upon and surely entertain and this is really the last bastion of a competitive all-star game across our professional sports. David, I want to offer you this space maybe to make a formal pitch here. Is, is there anything you'd add, alter, to ensure this game doesn't go the direction of other star-studded exhibitions we see? Yeah, I'd want to make, given that it doesn't count, the change that I pushed for for years is I wanted a designated hitter that would be allowed to hit in the ninth inning no matter where you were in the lineup. Mm. We needed that walk to happen for Julio Rodriguez to get up. I don't want to wait for the walk. I don't want to worry about the walk. I want to make sure we get that at bat, that we have the best hitter going against the best pitcher to have the maximum moment that you can have. And you can manufacture a moment. We're not breaking any rules. This time it doesn't count. It would be <laughs> fine to do that. We saw a pitcher with an IFB in his ear while pitching an <laughs> inning. I think we can have someone at the plate when we want them. I like it. Uh, Matt, I'll, I'll give you that same space here to offer something. Maybe IFBs in, IFB in everybody's ears. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I totally agree with that. I'm going to piggyback off of that and say, well, let's give him a pinch runner, too. Because can you imagine when the National League was down by a run and they get a base runner? Oh, by the way, here's Ellie De La Cruz that we're going to throw on first base now. Now the drama, the <laughs> drama is dialed up in the late innings right there. So Love David's idea, and like I said, I'm just going to piggyback off of that. Let's give him a pinch run or two. Or think about even a few years ago, heck, even now, Terrence Gore, throw him in there. Then, then like I said, the drama is really dialed up in the late innings. Late game flexibility clauses. I'm in for it. I'm totally in for yes. it, guys. Uh, we you are only. Ter I did not David, have yeah. Terrence Gore on my bingo card <laughs> as part of this segment. I'm just glad we got you some Jeff know. Conine in know. as well, guys. You never know what you're going to get here on HQ. <laughs> uh, we are only as good as our next one, so let's get to the second half. I need a couple bold predictions out of you guys. Matt, I'm going to go your way first. What's something on your mind right now, something you think may come to fruition or something you hope to see the second half? Yeah, I, this is probably not going to happen. But in the preseason, my World Series prediction was the San Diego Padres are going to win the World Series. They're six out, six and a half out of the last wild card spot right now. They played really well going into the break. They've been better than the record all year. They just couldn't put it together. The situational hitting was so bad. They just have too many good offensive players to keep hitting as poorly as they were hitting. The pitching staff's been good all year. Blake Snell's been amazing. He's looked like Cy Young Blake Snell. I also think A.J. Preller is going to be very aggressive ahead of the trade deadline. I think they can find a way to squeak into the playoffs. And since I said they were going to be World Series champions before the season and I'm a glutton for punishment, why not? I'll just <laughs> say the Padres win the World Series and shock the world. Well, you won't have to wait long for that punishment. David, what's your thought? I'm sorry, Matt, but I'm going the exact <laughs> other sorry way. About My yeah. main man, A.J. Preller, 
is going to be looking for a job come October oh. because the Padres and the Mets are not going to make the playoffs. They are not going to be able to jump over all the teams they need to, and both of them will have changes. You saw Steve Cohn indicate that he wants to bring someone in, like David Stearns, to go above Billy Epler. At some point, Peter Seiler, the owner of the Padres, is going to say, what am I doing? I am writing checks. I'm losing money. We're signing every player, and we're not even winning 81 games. Something's got to change, and the owner's not going to change, and they've got players signed until 2074, so there has to be another change, and that's when you change the front office. So my prediction is that the Mets and Padres, the number one and number three payroll in all of baseball, do not make the playoffs. Either change or a trophy, it all starts coming our way on Friday. Fellas, we appreciate you, as always, for weighing in here on the All-Star Game. That's David Sampson and Matt Snyder. Here's a look at those first-half leaders that carry a certain momentum into the second half. We saw Luis Arise slap a pair of singles, much to the ilk of what he's done in the first half. Saw him do that in the All-Star Game, 383, uh, leading the pace in batting average. Could something crazy happen? Could he get even hotter? It's going to be a whole lot of fun to watch, and it's always a blast anytime Shohei Otani puts on the pants and the uniform. But will he be wearing that uniform at the end of this season, the beginning of next? Questions become answers on Friday.